comedy of all time. It is directed by Edgar Wright, written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. It is an amazing send-up of the buddy cop genre. Not only is it a great parody, pretty much, but it's also just a great buddy cop movie. It happens to be a love letter to all the movies that are about police and buddies and cops and all this stuff. Yeah, little backstory, basically. Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg had the idea because of the success of Shaun of the Dead, how everyone said, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost were great together as a pair. They said, well, why don't we do a buddy cop comedy? And they literally watched so many movies for research. They took a long time writing the script, interviewed real police officers. And yeah, that's how they came up with it. Nick Frost, they asked him to watch a bunch of cop movies when he watched one, which was Bad Boys 2, I believe. I think that's true. I heard that somewhere. Anyway, let me get into the film. Police Constable Nicholas Angel, born and schooled in London. to arrest record for any officer in the Met. The film starts in a great sequence where we get to see Nicholas Angel narrate himself, his life, going from a rookie, a constable, to a PC where he is finally doing what he's meant to do, be a cop. And he's so great at being a cop. It's awesome. And I love this opening. Not only does it have the great voice of Simon Pegg narrating, but it has visual gags. Like I said in my Raising Arizona review, I know they say filmmaking is show, don't tell, but here it is showing and telling, and it works out great. And here's a great scene that has so many great jokes. I'm telling you, these jokes like a mile a minute. Hello, Nicholas. How's the hand? You can speak to the inspector, but I can promise you he will tell you exactly the same thing as I have. Hello, Nicholas. How's the hand? And they're telling him that they're going to make him sergeant in a village, so he didn't take it very well. In where, sorry? In Sanford, Gloucestershire. And we also get a great Bill Nye uh, down the derby right here. Fact is, you've been making us all look bad. I also, uh, you might, you might, you might want to keep this in mind when he says this. With respect, sir, you can't just make people disappear. Yes, I can. I'm the chief inspector. Anyway, he goes to tell Janine, his ex-girlfriend. I've been transferred. I'm moving away for a while. Well, I'm not Janine. <clears throat> Janine, I've been transferred. I'm moving away for a while. I know. Bob told me. <laughs> that he is moving. And she said, yeah, it's okay, whatever. And then... She tells him the only reason they don't together is because he cares too much about the job. Well, she you can't switch off, Nicholas. And until you find a person you care about more than your job, you never will. He kind of thinks, yeah, it's true, but he ends up leaving Janine and going to Sanford. The details of your accommodation. You've got you a lovely little cottage on Spencer Hill. We'll look forward to meeting. Once he's in Sanford, he makes it to the uh, Swan Hotel, and a great shiny reference is here. Hoping to uh, check in. Check in? But you've always been here. Excuse me. See, I'm telling you, the references in this movie are insane and funny. So he gets this castle suite, gets bored, goes down to the local pub, because this is an Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost movie, there has to be a pub. Find a lager, please, Mary. Yes, sir. You see Nick Frost right there. He's not a important character yet. And Nicholas is such a good cop that he can't let the fact that there are underage kids drinking. And he's not even on duty yet. So I love this gag right here. It was even funnier. When's your birthday? 22nd of February. What year? Every year. 
I mean, if a, if a cop told me, when's your birthday? And I said, the day is like, what year? It'd be like, every year. He'll probably arrest me for being an asshole. So literally, the entire bar was filled with underage kids, so they had to leave. I think the only people left were Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. So Simon Pegg takes Nick Frost for attempting to drive drunk. Did you I'm taking you to the station. Where is it? Jail. And he arrests a bunch of people. Which the guy in the front desk has a great line about. Oh, when did you start? Tomorrow. Oh, well, I see you've already arrested the old village. Not exactly. He went as it'll come back later, actually. Now, this is a cool scene. Basically, a lot of cops said they are upset that there is no visualization of paperwork in cop phones because one very, very important part of the job is doing all the paperwork. Well, let's, you arrest somebody, right? You don't just throw them in the jail and that's it. You have to do paperwork. You have to fill out forms, arrest stuff. You know, it's all very, uh, what's it called? It's all very procedural. So, yeah, that's, that's really cool that they make paperwork look, look awesome in this movie. So, we met the great Timothy Dalton as Simon Skinner being so villainous that. It's obvious they try to make him look like the villain. That's kind of the joke, but he's just so good at it. I love this too. Come and see me sometime. My discount's a criminal. Catch me later. And this is another great gag where you see a guy that looks just like the other front desk guy, also played by Bill Bailey, and he love. And I love this line. I don't know. Nobody tells me nothing. This is even funnier. Oh my God. Who's gone? <laughs> so it turns out Nick Frost is Banny, who is a police officer and the son of the police chief. And yeah. Frank Butterman. I oh, see so you've already met my boy. Yes. So the police chief, chief inspector, I mean, uh, played by Jim Burnett, uh, Frank Butterman, is explaining to. to uh, Nicholas, that Sanford is the safest village in the country. Statistically, Sanford is the safest village in the country. I thought I just said. But yeah, I mean, that's what they think. And then Nicholas is very adamant about how being geographically away from a big city should not mean that they should uh, do laws differently. Respect, sir. Geographical location shouldn't factor in the application of the law. No thanks. Which is a very character-defining moment. And then he tells the story of Sergeant Potwell, who thought, you know, rural policing is easy, but had a mental breakdown. Oh, yes, I had a big, big, bushy beard. A great, big, bushy beard! Come. So he shows them around the op the op the uh, police station, introduces them to the police officers. And this is where it all happens. That is Sergeant Tony Fisher. And I do like this gag right here. We like to let them think they run the place. Well, that's that. Unless there's anything you're unclear about. Uh, yes, sir. Why is everybody eating chocolate cake? Yeah. Where he says, uh, why is everyone eating chocolate cake? And it turns out it's Punisher for Danny. And he said, well, he drive drunk. He's like, no, that's Punisher for last week's. This week should be serious. And he's like, good. What is it? He's like, do you like ice cream? I'm sorry, sir. I don't follow. He's been making my ice cream. That's great. I love this. So now they're all having lunch, and they make him, and Nicholas says it's not his choice to go down there. And I love this gag of the apple cart. The apple cart. Yeah. Because we all sell apples around here, don't we? Your dad sells apples, Andy. And raspberries. <laughs> tell you, the jokes in this film are so rapid fire, it's great. And it's even funny. This is a great joke, too. Got a mustache. I know. <laughs> also, did I see some? A little foreshadowing. You can't wait to jump into Sergeant Popwell's grave. I'm anyway, so uh, now after realizing that Nicholas has been stabbed, Danny is gravitating towards him because Danny is very into action shit. So he wants, he likes, he's very interested that Nicholas has done all this stuff. And asked him a bunch of questions. 
You ever fired two guns whilst jumping through the air? No. You ever fired one gun whilst jumping through the air? No. Now they're at the NWA. Haha, <laughs> good pun. Uh, where is a neighborhood watch alliance? Nicholas meets a bunch of the people. This is Leslie Tiller, whose horticultural expertise has helped put Sanford on the map. She's ever so good. Oh, go on. <laughs> at the village. And they have the meeting about the living statue, which one of them is complaining about, which is a very funny gag. A blight to our streets. It's made all the more disturbing as the Village of the Year contest looms. I refer, of course, to the extremely irritating living statue. And then Nicholas is doing the thing at school where Danny has asked a question. Yes. Is it true that there is a place in a man's head that if you shoot it, it will blow up? That's fine. And then we meet another important character, Tim Messenger. Hi, hi, Tim Messenger. Uh, can I get a quick shot for the Sanford Citizen? Who is a guy for the local newspaper. And it was great. I love this guy. I think the swans escaped. The swans escaped? Just staker. Yeah, Mr. Peter Ian Staker. P.I. Staker, yeah. right. Piss Taker, come on! Yes, Mr. Staker, um, we'll do everything we can. Can you describe it to me? But uh, this actually happened. Uh, one of person who was in, was it called, law enforcement, he literally uh, did have to catch a swan. Now we have another great scene with Timothy Dalton being very sly and, you know, saying weird shit. <laughs> All too many have defected to the big mega mart in Buford Abbey. May their heads be struck from their shoulders for such disloyalty. And then he, Nicholas, chases a guy stealing from Timothy Dalton's supermarket. And they arrest him, but Simon Skinner, Timothy Dalton, doesn't want to press charges. And you'll find out why later. And now they're... And... How did I forget that? There's a great fence gag here. What's the matter, Danny? You've never taken a shortcut before. This is funny. Now, the reason I brought that up because there's a, there's a funny thing here where Danny says, Point Rick has a great scene with people jumping fences. And there's a great line right here. You do do what I do. What on earth do you think you're missing out on? Gunfights? Car chases? Proper action and shit. Police. Oh, the funny response. This work is not about proper action. Or shit. So they stop. And what is the shortest chase scene of all time? A lawyer who is on the way to do Romeo and Juliet. And, uh. And Simon, I mean, uh, Nicholas works his magic on him. Posturous. Preposterous. Look, stop writing! Stop. Writing. <clears throat> Look, you're right. Using the most important thing in his util utility belt, basically, his police notepad. Which will come back later, too. I'm telling you, this movie sets up jokes, sets up payoff so well, you'd even notice it the first time you watch it. But you watch it as many times as I have, which is probably a hundred times, you'll notice them all. So Danny wants to do go to the pub, but he thinks not a good idea. They get invited to the shitty play. They watch it. It's shitty, of course. It is funny. Poison! I'll kiss thy lips. Aptly some poison doth ya hang on him. And they told Darren Bro to drive safe. And they die. <laughs> So now there's a mystery element of the movie. Who's killing all these people? Oh, I do like this guy. Decaffeinated. It's a funny guy because they never deal with any murders because it's a crime free city. So Nicholas investigates and this great thing happens when Simon Skinner, the obvious bad guy apparently, fires, drives by playing Romeo and Juliet. I love struggle, Romeo. The and I like this accident implies there's no one to blame. Oh, and then there's also the detectives who are not doing their jobs. And there's also a great scene where uh, Nicholas Angel and Danny go and take the old man with the doll, and I love this line. We need the dog. 
It's not the dog we need. As you said, you know, I ain't charged with him. I couldn't see the views more. Was he mumbo? Basically, this old man talk. But it seems important because that's where they find all these guns. What do you mean by this one? And Nicholas ends up taking Danny's offer to go to the pub. They sit down to get drunk and they have a great conversation where he says why well, he wants to be a police officer because he felt that it's the right and wrong and he wanted to do that. Oh, there was a time where he wanted to be Kermit the Frog. For a time when I didn't want to be a police officer, apart from the summer of 1979 when I wanted to be Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and then Danny explains that he's a police officer because dad does it and he wants them to be close after his mom died. And she died in a... Do you mind if I ask how she died? Traffic collision. Good use of vocabulary there, Danny. I love this. Hey, watch this. Ah, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, my eye. <laughs> then they get drunk. They take a drunk man home, who is also a church merchant. A wealthy entrepreneur business now, whatever. It doesn't matter, his house blows up. And, yeah. Well, this is this matter. Uh, Danny and Nicholas start the bond because Nicholas says he can't switch off his brain. I think I know how. I can show you how. So they start watching action movies. Nicholas gets a call that the merchant was blown up. They corner it, and again, Simon Skinner drives by playing fire. To destroy what you've done. He just wants to be the bad guy. This Timothy Dalton let him be the bad guy. And then they find that the swan was there. And then Nicholas has to go to a uh, festival to do police work. And here is Science Skinner being a nomadic again. Splat, the rat. And then they come up in a bit. Shark! Danny takes him to shoot. Tim Messenger wants to tell him something important. And guess what? The rat gets... <clears throat> Guess what? The rat gets splatted, and a fucking uh, part of the church roof blasts his head open. Amazing gore effects. Simon, Simon uh, Nicholas thinks that all these deaths are connected, so he starts doing some research, starts going to Danny, and they're stuck. Department of Planning and Development. Where George Merchant secured permission to build his dubious mansion on Norris Avenue. So, maybe they were all accidents. Oh. And then Danny's birthday is here, so Nicholas goes out by him a peace lily, and now the character of Leslie Tiller is going to spill the beans. But he goes out to get his notebook, which he forgot for some reason, I don't know why. But like any soplon, as they say in Mexico, she gets murdered. So Nicholas chases the guy, he gets away. And then he accuses Simon Skinner of being the murderer because he has clear motives of making sure he has no business. Like, they're going to make, like, a supermarket, whatever, or something. And then he killed a competition in cold blood. And he murdered Leslie. And, yeah. But it turns out Nick, uh, Simon Skinner is in the story the whole time. He looks through all the security footage during the store's security footage. Will absolve me. Do feel free to spool through. The dates of the murder, and Simon Skinner says, "How can I possibly be at more one than one place at once?" So Simon Nicholas is starting to disbelieve himself. Then he gets an idea. What if there's multiple killers? But Frank Busterman, the chief inspector, tells him to sleep it off. Well, he can't sleep it off because he's about to be murdered. <laughs> but he stops. Uh, Lurch, of all people, knocks him out with a peace lily, tells Danny to wait there, and he goes out and finds out that the whole village is NWA are behind the murders. Martin Blower died because he was a bad actor, and Lee had to die too. Merch Mer died because he had an awful house that was not in line with the village's thing. 
and Tim Escher died for being a terrible journalist, and Leslie Tiller died for trying to get away from the village. And who's behind it all? Frank Buzzerman, a chief inspector, who, after his wife died, who Danny told him about, in a car accident, it was suicide, actually. She killed herself because they lost the Best Village Award. I swore that I would do her proud, and whatever the cost, we would make Sanford great again. So now, uh, Frank Butterman is doing everything he can to make Sanford the best village and win the award every year. Also, they kind of did something about that earlier before. This is murder! It's not! It's ketchup! I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the others! Anyway, so Nicholas has to run away, get stabbed by Danny, who did his ketchup trick. I love this. Anyway, so now Nicholas has to go back and deal some big city justice. I love this so much. Danny? Danny? I love how he doesn't even get to say this is Nicholas. He gets punched in the face and he kicks an old lady in the face. <laughs> that is a callback to the other line. What are you gonna do? Just walk in and arrest the whole village? Not exactly. Okay, now this music is done by Rod Rodriguez and it's so fucking cool. I love this clean up montage. It reminds me of Army of Darkness and Evil Dead 2. And I love this so much. Someone from London call for you. I'll tell him you'll ring him back. <laughs> so yeah, now Nicholas has a shootout with the Sanford people who say they're a safe village, but they'll have guns. Guns. He takes them out all non-lethally. None of them die. He goes after Simon Skinner, and they all end up at the model village along with Frank. Simon Skinner is impelled by the church rooftop in the model village. Which is <laughs> this irony. Uh, and Frank Butcherman is subdued by the swan that they've been trying to catch the whole movie. Remember that from earlier? <laughs> Actually, the movie has great payoffs. And then Danny and Nicholas save the day. Then the Then the real police, no, not the real police, the police from London come and arrest Frank and everybody else. And Nicholas says he kind of likes it here and they have a lot of paperwork to do, so he can't go back to London. So they do the paperwork and then there's only one NW member left, the guy in the Neighborhood Watch Alliance, who shoots Danny, saving Nicholas. He kicks him, and let's say, Nicholas is a kill anybody in this movie. This is his own fault. Oh, God, no. He lands on the mine, that sea mine they got from all those weapons. There's also a sea mine there. The whole spaceship explodes in an amazing explosion that was done with practical and digital effects. They did practical, the window, they did a model of the whole building and, and composited it to make a big explosion. So now we see that Danny survived, and now he is the sergeant, and Nicholas is the chief inspector, and they're off to do more police work. Sergeant Butterman, little hand says it's time to rock and roll. And that was Hot Fuzz, the funniest movie ever made, in my opinion. It is a great uh, buddy comedy with a lot of humor, a lot of heart. Uh, I love this movie so much. Uh, Simon Pegg did an amazing performance. Nick Frost is great. Everyone is great. Everyone, lo I love this movie so much. Uh, I just, I, I mean, I could probably do a whole two hour video on this movie as long as the actual movie itself. But I'll leave it at that. Remember to like if you like, comment, and subscribe if you like to. Honest Critic out. <laughs>